April 20th, 2021, about 6.02. Uh, roll call, please. Mr. Harris? Here. Mr. Talbert? Here. Mr. Keene? Here. All right, we got new business. Uh, review, discussion, and recommendation of ordinances. A, discussion of proposed section 125-33, placement of fill from Gravity Drainage District 1. We have anybody here that would like to speak on this? We got an audience full, I think. <laughs> so, you need to state your name, please, sir. <clears throat> Derek Murphy, representing. Gravity Drainage District 1, which is the server at their pleasure tonight to present y'all, the Ordinance Committee, with a new ordinance about floodplain mitigation in uh, in the district in the Okay. So give us a minute while we set up. This seems to be the easiest way to show people what actual floodplain mitigation is and what it means to the parish. So while, while y'all are setting that up, this this will apply to Gravity Drain District 1 only, but it's only the parish part of Gravity 1. Will it not pertain to the city part of Gravity 1? The city of Elm Springs will have to do it separately. Okay, so I mean if the city would have to, the city would have to pass the same ordinance for it to apply within the ceiling. Okay, I just I'm making sure that's what I thought. So in a nutshell, and I'll get the ordinance again. Uh, in a nutshell, what this, what this does is it, it, it puts regulations and rules in place in order to help maintain uh, the, the floodplain within, within Gravity Drainage District 1. So right now, multiple parishes around Livingston has uh, ordinances in place. In other words, if you feel within the floodplain, you have to excavate out of the floodplain. This is about being hydraulically equivalent, and what that means is it ha water has to be able to flow freely with gravity in and out and there are certain stipulations in this ordinance that says you know you can't be above below water you can't be it's got you can't pump it out things like that and it also has an exclusion in here the exclusion is for single family residential uh we're not this is mainly for commercial dirt moving operations like mass mass grading and uh things like that so the individual who wants to build a house, what we did, we put some stipulations in here and the board, uh, basically 5,000 square foot of structures. They're exempt. So if you're putting 5,000 square foot of single family residential structures, which is shed, uh, house, what have you, those, that, that is exempt from this ordinance within the drainage district. Also, they was uh, the 10%, they wanted to put two in there. So in other words, if, uh, so it's an either or up to 5,000 square foot. So if you had a small lot, then it would be basically 10% of that lot. And so, again, this is not really aimed at, at the single family. It's aimed at mass grading, commercial sites, things like that. Um, what has happened, as you feel more and more the floodplain, as you're about to see here, uh, every time it rains, it, it rises just a little bit and a little bit and a little bit so what we're trying to do is just introduce something to just get the conversation started that when you feel inside the floodplain you have to take something out in order to maintain that floodplain uh, I, in baton rouge uh, we've even done uh, it's been around for a long time since we've been around uh, i think tangy has it as well and so this is within the amy river watershed i mean this this is what other parishes are doing and so, what I was trying to get at, so if we're looking at here, okay. So we're going to fill this up just like rain, bricks act as ground. That's all they had dollars for. You can see we're at 100 year, 100 year floodplain mark right now. So, yes, I can't see it. 
So it's filled right now to the line. So we can move bricks around in the floodplain. We can subtract and take out. And that line doesn't move. But you start just adding dirt. You can see that you've now taken away capacity and you, you water levels high. So you can also see that go back down to the hundred year. So back down. If you're filling above the hundred year, it doesn't affect. So it's only for the hundred year floodplain down. So what we try to do is balance. This is all about balance. If you add in the floodplain, you take out the floodplain and you make sure that you balance within your site. One thing we, we have a provision in here that also talks about if you can do a drainage improvement adjacent to your, your project and it better, you can prove that it, it betters uh, the situation and balances with your property, we allow that in order so we can look at that as long as the engineering supports what you're trying to do. So it's kind of like credits that you would, you know? Well, we, there's no credits, but what happens is we allow you to do a drainage, pro, uh, a drainage project adjacent to yours uh, in order to help create instead of being completely on your property. As long as we got to serve it to you. Would decide <clears throat> so, I mean, you'd have to do a study, you'd have to do a study to figure out what the impact <clears throat> of the improvements were versus what compared to what your what you would do is make sure they offset each other one to one. Correct. Okay. Uh, so that that was a provision put in there because we we I've I've even had some projects where because it betters the community, right? Instead of me just doing a hole or something, we still got detention we got to contend with. But instead of mitigation being on site, I can do a drainage project right next to it and help solve that problem. Okay. So um, so you refer to that line as the hundred year. You called it. What'd you call it? That hundred-year base flood elevation. Okay, oh, so is, so is that is that basically that line is BFE plus one right now according to your ordinance? I mean, no, is that, that is BFE. So the free board that y'all have as as a finished slab of one. So you're, you're it doesn't apply. So as long as you're above BFE, you're good. Yes. See, we're trying to balance out the floodplain, but your structures have still got to be above that. That's why I'm showing. It doesn't matter how high I stick right. the bricks because. Uh, it doesn't affect the floodplain itself. It's West, a West, <clears throat> West, remember that? You gotta come up and answer quick. That presentation you made a couple of years ago when we had that morning meeting to discuss the floodplain. You know, we we had, we had discussed this once before. We had had an order to introduce to, to to control. You know, fill, in the fill within the floodplain. You talked about a particular residence in Denham Springs that you know that went in '83 didn't flood and then 16 did. Is that house above BFE? Because I mean, there's some houses that flooded that are above BFE. So I'm just trying to figure out, you do, is BFE just a number that you, you're just determining because there are houses that flooded that are full, above base flood, right? Correct. But even your own ordinance is based on base flood elevation, based off the firm. And so that's what governs the base flood elevations in the parish. So what, the, out of just, you don't, don't think it is. You don't think it's it is. The same height it was in '83. It was in 2006. Okay, so I mean, I, I, I guess I'm just so so. In essence, we've determined we've determined that there's an arbitrary number that we're going to base stuff on. But in essence, certain rain events would still be impacted. We would still have a water increase even if this ordinance was being enacted because we would exceed BFE with with water. That's correct. Any flood event over a hundred-year flood event. Come on up. Come on still, up. Still, 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 so they can get it on. Water Dan, are you talking about stuff other than just field mitigation? No. When you're talking about projects, what was that? What I was talking about is in order or to just field mitigation. Just field mitigation. So if you have a, if you're adjacent to a canal, if you're adjacent to. You could get your mitigation perhaps out of that canal in order to improve that. Because you know, in, it, I think in EBR used to be two base flood elevations upstream or downstream in the same watershed. Well, I think in here we talk about one one BFE. Upstream one one base flood elevation yeah. upstream. So, because I thought you were talking about possibly if you wanted to spend the money to determine, hey, 
this field at this location in the floodplain might raise BFE by four tenths of a foot. That what if we did some widening and improving on this section of the canal to lower without really even doing field mitigation? I didn't know if you were talking about that or just strictly field mitigation. Well, this ordinance is just field mitigation. So I can also see your point on trying to do improvements and try to more complicated to figure that yeah. out. But I didn't know if you was talking about that. Too. But you were right, Gary. Like I said, for 16 floods, which are way in excess of. Well, I mean, I mean, I mean, you're, you're still going to have some. Well, yeah, I just don't. I just think it, people need to understand that this isn't a fix-all for everything. Because in essence, what we, we, I mean, what we tried to do was just limit fill over where water is going to eventually creep, depending on you know how much rain we get or how much we flood. So, I mean, that's why I was just wondering. So we're we're not we're looking at we're we're drawing the line of BFE, and if any dirt above BFE is irrelevant. Right. You don't put that mitigation. That's correct. Uh, so if you're lots above BFE, this ordinance doesn't apply to you at all. Right. If the dirt's already above base flow, no field mitigation requirement. Yeah, I mean, if that's what we got to read. Okay, so, so Derek, are y'all going to certify like a pit within a within a flood zone and say that you can bring the dirt out of that pit because you're creating space in the pit when you bring the dirt somewhere no, else? No, sir. So it would have to be in close proximity to the site. Well, I mean, I'm just trying to figure out if that's, a, if that's intent, an option. The intent of this the way this was written for the drainage district was they don't want to they don't want to burden the, pro the property owners that live within the drainage district and they don't want to prevent people from building within the drainage district they want to make it a level playing field you know don't, don't want to cause issues for somebody and we don't want to cause issues for somebody trying to build and develop in the community overall that, that's the overall goal this is a bare nuts and bolt ordinance that covers fill mitigation there are many Additions that can be put on to, right. yeah. like what he's talking about. This is just this is a minimal, or, this is a minimal idea. This is just for commercial things. Well, I know you said five thousand square foot for residential, for commercial activity. Is any <coughs> there for that? No board didn't want to do a commercial. So, just playing devil's advocate. You know, we talked about field mitigation. Yeah. Wow. Twenty years. So you could, I mean, but so here's the here's the situation here. You're gonna have a a very valuable half acre track on 190 that you can't do anything with that is four foot below base flood because a lot of lives in parish below base flood if you can't find another piece of property right there it could be of zero value really that's a real possibility uh, unless you i mean well unless you, well, I mean, or you might could use half of the half acre, so now you got a quarter acre well, I mean, available. Look, so I, I guess through a variance request, I mean, through the planning zone, I mean, that or, that would be typical. That's going to be a slippery slope. Yeah. Well, you I mean, to one, I, now you have to give it up. So well, I mean, look, I mean, the, if you leave other parts of it, you, look, I got a camp at Oakdale. Everything built up off the ground, so it's not unusual for a store to be built on pile. You know what I'm talking about? And people walk up some stairs. I know that's not used to, but there is. You can build a commercial building like that. However, Gravity 2 looked at doing theirs like that and chose to pile dirt up because of the cost versus, you know, I mean, I'm, I'm not going to deny that the cost on a commercial building becomes, the engineering alone on what you got to do with the slab and stuff becomes tremendously expensive. So, Look, I've lived in parish all my life. Field mitigation is going to protect people, but it is also going to make property less valuable or undeveloped. Okay. I mean, that's just the nature of the And that's understandable. Yeah. But right now, I don't get a phone call from a developer. I don't get a phone call from somebody wanting to move into Dillon Springs and build. I get the phone calls from the little lady or the old man or the young people over here that's in this house right now wanting to know, is my house going to go underwater because they're building? Well, and, and, and that is our purpose yeah. for this building is to protect <laughs> the people that are there now. I agree. Well, Until well, we can get caught up, because there's a lot of work. Y'all know, y'all seen the areas. There's a lot of work that's got to be caught up in our parish. Yeah in our cities, in our places, that we got to get caught up so we can not have the people out here freaking out calling at 2 o'clock in the morning because it's raining too. Well, so, so let me ask you a question. Why, why, why are you talking about getting caught up? Is, 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 is there a point in time that, this, that, that we could have enough drainage improvements that this isn't necessary? I mean, or is, it, is, this a, is this a forever type situation? Well, it depends on maintaining the floodplain or not. I can tell you, uh, the other parishes have been as long as I can remember in some other parishes. It's about every time FEMA comes out or every time the floodplain gets restricted, 
you know, all that you gets closer? Get closer. Get closer to the mic, dude. There. Yeah, closer. Closer to the mic. <clears throat> so, you would have to do so many improvements in order to offset, and then you, then you'd have to almost study every individual project itself. I don't disagree with anything I've set up here today. Um, we run into this. It's 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 got its pluses, it's got its minuses, but the pluses of mass grading and doing things from a purely floodplain volume. Floodplain mitigation does help with that situation. Cool. I mean, that's not, okay. So, so in essence, if I build a five thousand square foot house, it under roof or slab or whatever, whether it's in one structure or three structures or whatever, I'm exempt on this deal. From a single family residential, yes. Okay, and then if and then if I have a large lot, like acres, if I've got ten acres, I can build a twenty thousand square foot house as long as it's less than ten percent of a lot. Then I can continue. I'm still exempt. Is that is that kind of how we're structured to, so that we don't penalize people? If, if you've got a big if you've got big acreage in a big house, then you're okay still. Yes. There's a there's actually a, a year cut off, which is corresponds with the year. The flood hazard boundary map for uh, Livingston Parish was adopted. So basically, dating back to the creation of NFIP, you would be able to, anything before that would be grandfathered in. We can't. There, if it's a six-year-old structure, and it's a well, I mean, I, I mean, I understand. So, well, if I built one in the middle of my 15 acres, is what he's saying. So, if you so, built a 20,000 square foot house, it would still be exempt because of the fact that it doesn't take up more than 10 percent of the. Well, you can do seal Yeah, you yes. could. Well, but but yeah, but if I don't want to dig a pond, if I don't want to dig a pond and create the liability, what we're saying is that we're going to give them a ten percent exemption on the lot size on residential. So if I'm if I've got five acres, then I don't know how many square feet that is. So I, I could build a house up to ten percent of that, or fill up ten percent of that five acres, and still be exempt. Is that what you're saying? It doesn't matter. I'm not limited to five thousand. Well, and again, I guess we need clarification right before, but it would be it would be an either or. In other words, oh, I understand. We're, we're so well, no, what we're thinking about is if you had a, a twenty thousand square foot, you know, half acre, then you have a two 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 thousand square foot, but not the other way around. Okay, so well, we've said we've given you a five thousand square foot exemption no matter what size your lot is. Right. I mean, if you got a twelve thousand square foot lot or a ten thousand square foot lot, you put a five thousand square foot house on it, you're still exempt. But 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 we've capped it at five thousand. But if I want to build a house bigger than that, if my lot is bigger and my house doesn't exceed ten percent of the lot size, then I'm still exempt. Is that that's what, what I see B to yeah, say? I mean, that's what that's what B looks like. But I, I think it's the, 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 the bigger the lot, the bigger the house, basically as long as they don't exceed ten percent of the square footage of the original lot. So we were thinking about it opposite is if you have a smaller lot. It doesn't matter. You've already given me an exemption up to five. If I've got a five thousand square foot house and I'm putting a five thousand square foot lot on it, I'm still exempt based on based on A. Yeah, so I don't need a temper, huh? Okay, what she, on 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 the on, 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 on B one sub B. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. I'm not. The fill required for construction, the exemption shall one? apply to single family residential lots if combined area of all structures on the lot is no more than five thousand. So I'm already granted a 5,000 square foot exemption no matter what. Right. By, by what but but B yeah. says for single family residential lots, the development will be exempt from field mitigation requirements if the area of the site field does not exceed 10% of the lot size as it exists at time of permitting. So if I've got a 10 acre lot, then in theory, I can build a one acre house on that sum gun and be exempt. Is that what y'all are trying to do there? May need to look at that. That wasn't what we're trying to do, but I can see where that could be interpreted. I mean, that, yeah. I mean that's what it says. What it I mean, says. it says that we're, and, and the, I think the thought process of that is that we're not going to, why would we penalize you for building a bigger <laughs> house bigger if lot. you're on a bigger lot where the impact won't, I mean, think about it. A 5,000 square foot house on a zero lot line lot or something like that would be a tremendous big, impact big if you fill the darn lot up. Right. However, we've already granted 5,000 square feet. However, if I want to build a 10,000 square foot house on 10 acres, why am I being penalized with field mitigation because I went over 5,000 if I'm, if I'm only using a small percentage of my property? 
And I think that's what it says. So I think that's the yeah. that's what it appears to be. But if my concern, the Lord, the thing, my concern gone. says, is that the time of permitting? Right. So I can have a ten acre lot, build a house on it, time of permitting, and then I start chopping it up, and, and then I continue to chop it up till I bypass the ordinance. Yeah. We need to look. At I mean, I'm just telling you that. that I mean, I mean, I just, I mean, every time we look at these things, I look at how these guys <laughs> that want to go around the rules look <laughs> at them, and that, that, I mean, that's what you do. You put one in the corner here and say this is the lot. Then, then you cut another lot out. Or you build a house on the, the, the second lot, then you cut it out again, and before it's over with, the houses keep getting smaller because the 10% gets less. But when it's all over with, you, you put a bunch of houses on one piece of property that exceeded what the exemption is. So what you're recommending is that B needs to go away. No, B doesn't need to go away, but B needs to, once you establish a lot size, the lot size needs to be stay that forever. Once you cut a lot out and put your house on it, and you're using that calculation, then that lot can't be cut up. Because we're giving them an exemption based on 10% of the lot size. Well, what if they don't use that 10%? That's the other thing. If they don't use it, then it doesn't apply. But if they use that 10%, I mean, if they go <laughs> over, if they stay under 5,000 square feet, B doesn't apply. Yeah. But if I build an 8,000 square foot house, then, then I need to identify <laughs> what part of that lot is is my am I utilizing? Otherwise, you know, I mean, you understand what I'm saying. Once you once you determine what the lot size is and, and calculate the ten percent, then that should be frozen, and you shouldn't be able to chop that up in the future because then you're just going around the, the way you calculated the ten percent. I mean, I understand what the ten percent is. We so, don't want to penalize somebody building a big well, house. That, they, that's the whole purpose of this. Is not I've seen what happens when you try to regulate single family resident, residential with floodplain mitigation. Oh, you get it every day. It, it gets I've seen it first I've seen it firsthand. I was I was new still here one one Thursday morning if I remember correctly on a uh, when, on a meeting. Because we tried to basically say if you're building a house you're limited to two or three feet depending on the size of it. If you remember and okay. or the size of the land and it just wasn't so you gotta you gotta kinda get them out the picture. Did you read D? It's it's saying exactly what we were trying to do. Well, I understand, but it, it but it, it, it limits it. I mean, you got to limit it, but it, it does give you some exceptions. So on when you develop a residential subdivision, you have to handle the field mitigation construction plan process. Yeah. Is that a problem? Is that does it, do you see? I mean, we're getting so tight on the west side. We don't want this to happen on the east side. They may adopt this later. You know. Yeah, I don't want you guys to misunderstand and think I'm against it. No, no, I got you. I'm not. Western. I'm not. I'm just saying. I'm. I'm. I. You know. You're gonna. You're gonna you're have gonna, to push back. Yeah, well, and, and inadvertently, you're gonna have Mrs. Johnson, who is 88 years old, who was planning on selling this prime piece of property that now is worth pennies on a dollar because of field mitigation. That's just the nature of the beast. Well, so, they it, build a you know, you, on that piece. you got yeah, both it, 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 issues. You'll water be flows through. With. Well, still, if you do a chain wall. You still got to fill. I mean, you, you could build houses up. You could develop the property low and build houses up on piers, but you're never going to be able to put them on slabs without doing field mitigation. I got you. Okay. So has has Gravity One endorsed this as being what they want to do within their district? I'll let Wesley answer that. No, yes. Yes, sir, that was brought to our Tuesday night board meeting, our past Tuesday night board meeting, and now the board did, did approve it. So, the, so was it unanimous? The board was. Yes. So the board unanimously wants to adopt these rules of drainage Inside within gravity, gravity one. Yeah. With field with respect to field mitigation. Yes, I mean after we're still doing a little bit of study work on it, but yeah, that was what they're they wanted. Okay, to so do. so so, do you want us to introduce this ordinance as it is written now, or do y'all want to wait? Do y'all need to do some modifications? I mean, what, where are we at on this thing? I mean, do. Is this an ordinance y'all want to introduce Thursday night for a public hearing two weeks from now, or do y'all need to do some more work? Yes. No, no. Right. So, I mean, I understand, I understand, but what I'm, but, but, but here's the deal. We have, I have brought stuff from Gravity 2 and says, look, we, we want these specs on pipes, we want these changes to the ordinance, and and the, and the council's respected that. So I have a feeling that if this is what the board wants, I'll make the motion now to introduce this with a favorable deal for a public hearing two weeks from now. 
Y'all can always have some modification in the next two and weeks, we'll, and we can we'll amend it as a deal. But but is, is this the basic ordinance y'all want to introduce? Yes. Okay. I'm I make a motion to introduce this ordinance uh, uh, Thursday night for a public hearing in two weeks at the request of Gravity Two. Not Gravity One. one. Gravity One, I mean. Yeah, no, I'll second. You got a okay, second. Got a, got a motion by Mr. Gary Talbert and a second by Bubba Harris. All in favor? Aye. Aye. There you go. And then, and then look, guys. I mean, you yeah, got, if you need to work on it, it's got, no problem. You, you got two weeks, and if y'all if y'all see a hitch in it, something y'all want to do, we can defer it. We, I mean, you know what I'm saying? We just we we got the ball rolling, and and this is what y'all want. So, you know, y'all are responsible for the laterals and, and 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 stuff in this area. So we're 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 willing to do what y'all need. Think y'all need to do. And so, and, and I, I I don't know if y'all remember, but a lot of the things that two and five have. And two especially has done the rest of the parish won't it? okay so this is probably something in the future that our entire parish needs to go by as it grows you know and as it fills up even more because it's not going to stop filling up okay so the the, the, the one thing y'all got blank on here is an effective date do y'all do y'all want to put it do y'all want to make it effective when after the parish president signs or do y'all want to have some period for people to grasp how this what was the thought of the board do y'all know it's effective when it falls okay. so I, that's one thing i'd like to go back give a little check with the board and just double check if they want to give it any kind of grace okay so basically so about. basically as it's introduced there is no effective date and we'll have to amend that at the time of the public hearing so y'all 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 have a meeting with the board no. before that so y'all yeah. can so. talk about do y'all want a grace period you know do y'all want to do whatever well, yeah we put effective date on there and we talked about it a little bit, but I don't, we want to make sure we got a consensus on okay. that. I mean, they may want six months or a year. You never know. I, mean, I'm just I, I, I think I from what I'm hearing from the board members, they want they're ready to do this now. They just want to because, them. like you said, one, it's going to protect the people that are already here that we hear from every time it rains hard. And it will protect those people that are coming here, you know, and make their life easier. And they don't have to worry all the time. And this, well, this is a basic ordinance when we talk about, we got more, you know, we, we could have went, could have added a lot of things. We, we just, the basic trying to just, just talk about flood mitigation and just start that process where everybody start to think about it and talk about the flood plan. Okay. And right right. I have uh, one thing, and I keep going back to this same thing over and over again, but I'm going to use, a, I won't name subdivisions, but in one particular subdivision, they go in there and they build these mounds of dirt up four and five feet. And the neighbors is right on each side of them. But everything that runs off of that roof is actually running onto the neighbor's property. So, so one of the things we did in here so, was talk about fields should not be placed closer than 10 feet of a property line. Usually on, on residential subdivisions, you got rear yard swells anyway, so it's limited. But one thing was talked about was uh, anthills and that kind of stuff. So we just kind of limited how close you can get to the property line. And we also put in there you know, to push the water away. If you build right up to the property line with, with, with a good mound, that neighbor is getting water. Right. They're getting some, some dirt, so we kind of limited how close you can get to that property. So, so in, from a from a design standpoint, because y'all do the same, y'all do y'all y'all wearing both hats in this thing. So, from a design standpoint, how how does this affect? How is this going to affect in in design? You're basically going to leave a, a buffer zone ten foot around the, the thing that's got to catch the. Not the, necessarily a buffer zone, but what we're going to have is just like we have today. We have some sort of Subsurface drainage, perimeter swell. Mike, sorry. We have uh, subsurface drainage, perimeter swell ditches, and that kind of stuff. So we already, most of the time, we already doing that. Or you get into it as if you're on the side, and it will limit how close you can get to that property line. The biggest change from a design standpoint will be how big the ponds, or however else you're going to do field mitigation. It is going to reduce the amount. Of density, Inside usually the at the depending on the flood and depending on the base flood elevation, the elevation of the property 
it will determine. So not only are the engineers going to have to look at the tension and look at how much pond they need for the tension, but they're also going to have to look at floodplain mitigation as a separate item. So, 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 so is this just going to squeeze a lot smaller? I mean, I'm just, I mean, I mean, think about it. Curb and gutter, all the stuff we've done have, we lots have progressively gotten smaller and smaller and smaller because of the cost of developing, you know, with this stuff. So, so this is this going to. Is this all of a sudden going to, we're not going to be able to build 45 foot lots, we're going to go to 40s now so that we can make it, I mean, I'm just trying to figure out, I mean, are we going to go to start building zero lot line subdivisions? I mean, what? Yes, I mean, it could be. No I, mean, I mean, I'm just trying to figure out, I mean, from a developer, I mean, looking at it from a developer's point of view, you can see what has historically happened as, as, okay. as improvements or changes are made to the subdivision order. And, and we went from open ditches to curb and gutter, and, and we look at the cost of developing the land. The cost of the land's gone up, the cost of developing the land's gone up. So you'll see a subdivision that might have been designed five years ago with 100 lots, and now all of a sudden they're bringing it back because they need to put 135 in it to make the thing work. So I'm just wondering if we get to field mitigation and we do this, are we going from now we're going to be trying to put 150, 160 lots in what used to be 100 lots? It, it will cost more on some projects, yes. So they, they're going to try to maintain density. Yeah. They are going to try to add lots, make them smaller, they can market that. Yeah. And a lot of prices are going to go up. up too. Well, let me tell you what, I, look, <coughs> I, I'm remodeling one now. I, I don't know if lumber can get any more expensive. No, uh, yeah. <laughs> So, uh, but that, yeah, that, that's just that's a byproduct. Nature to be. Okay, I mean, I just, I mean, I just want to, I mean, I just want to know if that's what, if that's the direction. I mean, every time we've done something, every time you see them, they, they, they squeeze in a lot, they squeeze in a lot, they squeeze in a lot. You know, I mean, like, and it, it's what we're dealing with. It's what everybody's dealing with. Prices are going going up due to the regulations that is put on development. They have to. It's, it's inevitable that you still have to, it costs a certain amount of money, but at the same time, if you know the rules up front and kind of plan for it, and, you know, that's what we're not asking. Anything that's already in preliminary plat and, and, and plan and all that kind of stuff, yeah. this doesn't apply. Right. So yeah. we try to make sure that everybody knows well, you, up front. You know, you know from an engineering point of view, they want to put a little buffer, they want to put a little... Little, little deal in there, a little three month delay, then them start going to be busy for the next three months getting preliminary plats in. You know how that's going to work. But anyway. I All right. Well, we appreciate it. And uh, we'll talk about it in two weeks. Well, two no, weeks we're going to talk about it two. We're going we're gonna to introduce, we'll introduce it tonight. Introduce it Thursday yeah. night we're and then talk about it this two Thursday weeks. And we'll talk about it two weeks. So y'all need to be planning on being here. The What's that, the 10th? Is that, is that, is that May 10th? Is that the 13th? Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. May 13th. So May 13th will be lucky 13th for you. All right. Hey, any, anybody else on this uh, topic? Okay. Well, we need to go to B, discussion of Chapter 125, subdivision regulations. Is that Mr. Gary Tyler? Look, this is a, this is. I think this makes a lot of common sense, and but I have a feeling there's some people here that are going to talk about it. So basically. Under under the under our current ordinance, <coughs> anybody can go subdivide a lot on anybody else's property. Technically, I can go out and survey an acre on scooters, fifteen acres in the front, and and take the map and sign it and submit it to planning, and they don't check the ownership of who owns it. Now, technically, scooter still owns that of that new lot that got subdivided, but we've got some restrictions on about you know. If you cut a lot up, you've got to wait two years before you come back and you know redo it. So, what this says is basically, if you go to 125-9 submittals under minor re minor subdivisions, the original of the final plat must be signed by the landowner or registered agent and submitted to the planning department. And so, so basically, the only changes we're doing here is that owners or registered agents are the only people that can sign final plats. Used to, we said ODS, which was owner, developer, or subdivider. And we're just saying that basically the changes in this ordinance say that the owner or registered agent are the only people that can sign pl final plans. Mm -hmm. Engineers, surveyors. That's how it would be on the bridge. I didn't realize that. No, anybody. Well, we can, didn't realize any, any, Anybody. <laughs> I mean, I'm, I'm just telling you, I mean, it doesn't make a lot of sense. And, and, and it typically doesn't occur. But let's say, let's say I 
got a piece of property with a business on it leased to somebody, but I want to subdivide. I'm really going to sell that piece of property out from underneath somebody. You know, if, if, if I don't have to sign that map and can get somebody else to do it, then I can deny any knowledge of what's going on up until the Sign. map signed and filed at the courthouse. And so I just think that, 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 that the registered agent or owner is the only person that should be able to sign a final plat. Did, did and we check and see what the surrounding people the, are doing? The, the, the other other parishes, uh, we kind of got this from them. They, ours is kind of wide open, ODS, which is... Anybody. Who? Any, I mean, basically, if I go bring a map in there, I'm I'm technically a subdivider. You know what I'm saying? So. Are you saying just for final plats and resos? What about preliminary plats? Does that have to be the owner or uh, approved or? Uh, do you have that on here? Preliminary. Preliminary. It doesn't. But I'm one. Well, what, okay. So, so I mean, I, I don't look. I don't care who makes the application. What I want is that final final map that's signed and filed in the courthouse that the owner registered agent, registered agent filed it. Because what happens is all that preliminary stuff doesn't matter. You know what I'm talking about? But once that thing's filed in the courthouse, then you've created a new lot. And the owner should know about it or the owner should sign it and request it. See, I, I, and I may be wrong here, but I think from a legal standpoint that if it wasn't signed by the owner or somebody that was a legal, whatever you call it, agent, I can tell. I, I can tell you that the planning department in Livingston Parish they doesn't care who owns the property. Right. All they care is that some final plat's been signed and does it apply to the ordinance, and the director will sign that sucker all day long. All, all I'm saying is, I think from a legal standpoint, it's not valid. Well, it's not really the only well. So all we're doing is clarifying the fact that the planning director will not be able to sign plats anymore. Unless they're signed by the owner or registered agent, and it's and let me tell you something, it doesn't take a lot of work to figure out who owns a piece of property or if they're the registered agent for the owner of that piece of property. That's something that's never been challenged, has it? Huh? Do you have in there for them to provide proof of ownership of the plat for signature? Uh-huh. Okay. I mean, I, I look. Yeah, I mean, no, we didn't tell them how to prove it, but I mean, they're. I mean, it's going to be the owner or registered agent. So, if the planning director, you know, I mean, they're going to have to sign it. It's going to be the owner or registered agent. So, if the planning director, you know, either has to verify it or they got to provide he that's up to him how they apply that ordinance i mean you know what i'm saying that look that, we we we, we, like in the, we in the we in the person i know you we in the we in the rule do i need to provide proof of ownership when we send the plan? i mean I, I would i would think that it would be the easiest thing to do i mean it's not hard you know what i'm talking about i mean it's not hard to generate who's the owner i mean you can you can go online and print a little thing from jason harris's deal and boom you know who owns a piece of property i mean it's not it's not a big deal but, or if, if some corporation owns it, then you just go to the Secretary of State and they've got the registered agent right there. So it's pretty easy to do. It's not, it's not a drawn out process. And if we don't want to do it in house, then we could request, you know, proof of that when it's, you know, when it's submitted. And that would be but a but I, I just think, I mean, the implementation of the, the, the wording is up to the planning department. I just think that in the future, only registered agents and owners should be able to sign final plans. And that's that's all this, every red line in this thing is to address who signs final plans. So the only thing that changes yeah. is ODS? No, it's just it basically wherever there's yeah. a final plan yeah. signature, then we're requiring registered agent and owners to be the person to sign. Okay. I'm, I'm going to make a motion to introduce that Thursday. Okay. Now I'll second. All right. Uh, motion by Gary Talbert, a second by Bob Harris. All in favor? Uh, Aye. 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 All right. Motion All right. Uh, old business? Anything? No? Uh, do I get a motion to adjourn? Well, you want to for motion to adjourn? I'm going to second that motion. All right. <laughs>